The first step of Venya Bonbacher's system is to lay some piles of hay out with treats sprinkled over them and then just invite the horse to go and explore while you sit back and observe. Reuben came out very calm and right away started to put his nose to the ground and look for the treats. Not, none of them had seen this before so uh, he seemed to catch on right away and just settle into nuzzling in the hay piles for treats. Jellybean also came out very calmly and um, she usually sticks with me and is less inclined to explore so I was pleasantly surprised that she seemed to catch on quite quickly to exploring for the hay or for the treats. I'll fast forward through this because it's not very interesting watching on a video but it was actually really nice to just sit and watch her explore and she was quite methodical how she would go from one pile to the next in the circle. She never skipped one. And then there was Tornado who came out of the gate running um, super up and keen to get going. He did start to explore before he figured out the treat piles. He was over here sniffing a pile of poo and looking around. So that was kind of interesting. Usually he wouldn't do that. Um, but then he got into the hay pile and figured out what the system was and barely lifted his head after that. So the next step is to start to move around them while they're eating and see if their energy changes at all. And I did actually really expect Tornado's energy to change because he is very sensitive to touch. And you see here, he does lift his head when I touch him. Um, and he seems just generally more uh, uh, sort of alert or intense when I'm in close proximity. So it was nice that he didn't change at all. So step three is to then put on the treat pouch and do the same. Again, observing on whether or not their energy changes, they get more interested. This is a disconnection training um, process, so uh, what you're really wanting them is to just nose around like a horse, regardless of whether you're wearing the treat pouch or close to them or far from them. And I was actually quite surprised that none of them changed their energy when I put on the treat pouch. Um, that, that did really surprise me. I thought they'd start to get interested in what, <laughs> what I was doing, but they did not care. Here I thought I would explore a little bit with distance. So he didn't react at all to me being close to him and touching him. But I wondered if he would react if I walked away and went at some distance. And other than being a little bit more alert, although he's always quite alert <laughs> to the environment, he didn't seem to react to that at all either. And it was the same with Tornado. It didn't matter that I um, went and put on the treat pouch. He just uh, kept doing his nuzzling thing, <laughs> getting the treats. So the fourth step is then to invite connection and um, you can do that using a, a target, doing a hand target or just asking them in any way to come over and connect with you. Now Jellybean picked up on that quite a bit. I've led her with the hand out so I think that's why she knew what that was. I asked her to come with me and um, she wasn't that interested in actually coming with me but she did connect with me. She continued to offer brief connection moments and so then I started leading her from one pile to another. I figured that we could achieve. But I found this really interesting. I put the treat down in the pile which is where the other treats were and where she had been getting treats and she could not figure out what was happening. She couldn't understand why it wasn't coming from my hand. And uh, this is kind of typical of her. She's not a conceptual thinker at all. She just, um, she's very literal or something. She just can't seem to 
make connections between things very easily. Here I'm asking uh, the Keener tornado to come and connect with me, which he does quite quickly. Um, but interestingly, that was kind of the end of it. He was off to nuzzle around in the hay instead. Finally, check out uh, how Reuben responds. Now he's the only one that's been trained to this start position, which is me standing and holding my hand out to the side. The others have kind of a vague concept from other things I've done, but he was actually, um, we did this in the Fenzi course. So he comes over almost right away and very readily, keenly. And I didn't actually have a plan on what to do with him. I didn't know that he would come with me. So I uh, had him target. And then I decided I might try to take him down into the round pen and see if he'd walk around with me, which was pretty ambitious. Um, you may have seen the video from yesterday where he was bucking and flying around uh, going to the far end of the round pen. So I was really pushing the envelope um, and just curious to see how he would respond to that. Mostly because honestly I had no other idea what to do with him now that he'd come over to me. <laughs> I didn't really plan that. Um, so whatever, we just ad-libbed. So I leave the gate open, I'm just turning it so it's the other way, so he doesn't get trapped if he wants to run out, which is what he was doing yesterday. He would, uh, I had decided to leave the gate open uh, for our reverse round pen yesterday, and he would buck and bolt out the door. This is usually the point that he would get quite agitated, uh, getting worried about going along the tree line. You see his head shoot up there. So that's why I stopped and treated there. And then at this point is often where he will um, bolt <laughs> past me. So again, his head goes up, but I give him a treat. I don't know actually if stopping him and giving him the treat was a great idea because he was so um, focused on what was behind him. But um, anyway, sorry, the camera didn't really cooperate for that part. And now he, he does actually go for the door quite quickly, and I asked him to hoe, and he did, which amazed me. I was really impressed with that. And, um, and then he came out super quietly and wandered back with me. So that was a really lovely uh, little exercise and connection in the middle of this disconnection training. He hates it when I drop a treat. He'll always remember that there's one on the ground that he didn't get. Um, and he, he goes and it's such a magnet, the target, but I just ambled over and um, put him back on his hay piles and he was happy to continue doing that nuzzling. So that was, a, that was kind of a neat um, experience for me to see kind of how to take him from that place into some calm activity and then back. In contrast, um, Tornado was not um, quite as adept at going in and out of it. And when I asked him to uh, come back with me, he uh, got quite agitated. And um, he starts to go the other way. And you'll see uh, some dropping happening and um, basically kind of dragging me in random directions, or it seemed random to me anyway. He went over to the target, which is always interesting when he's saying no to doing something. He'll often offer to just go and stand at the target instead. Um, but he got quite uh, pushy and agitated. So obviously he needs a lot more of this uh, type of approach to bring him in and out of a training mindset so that it's not such an abrupt... Uh, change in energy for him. I've decided to lead him because I really have to get him in at <laughs> this point. I'd been out here, I'd done all three horses, I was so cold at this point and really needed to get him in, plus it was getting dark. So that uh, energy on my part probably didn't help. And um, also, you wouldn't necessarily uh, need to be taking them away. I mean, I could have just left him out there, except for that is not a field. He 
he was going to be turned out in that night um, so I couldn't but that would be something to think about for next time is is not to have to bring him out um, this way so eventually he does come <laughs> still quite agitated you can just see his energy has completely changed from nuzzling in the hay piles um, but he does come with me and um, then interestingly he doesn't want to leave the field he wants to have a training session and asks if we can go down into the uh, round pen so um, that was kind of odd <laughs> and I thought well okay I'll take him down and just do a little bit um, in the round pen So I thought I would uh, just get him moving a little bit because he was so up and uh, just took him for a little trot around and um, did some other really short exercises, just a few minutes, a little bit of bending and then um, asked him to come out again. He was a little bit more relaxed uh, having been able to uh, have a little training session but as soon as I ask him to come back to the barn he again has a little moment uh, but I just let him think about it and he made a really good decision to come with me. Overall this was a really neat exercise to do and uh, I should say that I don't think Benya intends that you would do all stages in one session. Um, I, I imagine that um, what she would be saying is that um, you know as long as you have the calmness then you can move forward and so that's what I did I didn't really think I would get to each stage um, but it was really lovely just to watch them and see them nuzzle around let them explore and um, see how much they would come back to me and then um, disconnect again which is the idea is to just lower the arousal overall uh, of the training sessions, which for uh, at least two of mine, I really want to work on more. So it was a great, ex a great exercise to do that.